Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Bruce here, Traveling with Bruce, with a video about Zermatt, Switzerland. It is the second video about Zermatt. Uh, this place is magical, and um, I wanted to show you some more footage of the area, and also uh, show you the footage that uh, we took when we went up the, uh, the mountain. We took the rail... Um, train the rail cars up to the top of the uh, of the mountain lookout area absolutely incredible just outside of town uh, we're at 5100 feet here as you're watching these gliders uh, overhead uh, but the rail line takes you up another 5100 feet so you're at 10,200 plus feet at the end of the rail line and you are looking out over glaciers and mountains and you name it. It's just spectacular. Here is, of course, the star of the show in Zermatt. This is the Matterhorn, mountain known as the Matterhorn. On the side we're looking at here, that is Switzerland. On the back end of that mountain, it is Italy. And that's how close we are to the Italian border. Most days... This mountain is somewhat obscured because there's usually condensation up there, cloud cover. This uh, In the mornings, it's not uncommon to see a cloud cover like this. There I am uh, relaxing on the uh, patio of our hotel, and you can see the view I had uh, from the back of, the, uh, of our room. And um, as I zoom in here, you can see the, the fact that there's no cloud on the, no clouds on the right side. But there's clouds on the left side. And I think it has a lot to do with condensation and uh, dew points and that type of thing. But as the day wears on, the heat builds up. And uh, when you have clear skies, generally this uh, dissipates. The hotel we stayed at, um, absolutely fantastic. The Gina Bell, we really enjoyed it. Uh, we had a room on the second floor with this huge balcony in front of us. And over here to the left, you could see one of the two outdoor swimming pools. That's an indoor-outdoor pool, actually. And that pool is a therapy pool. It is uh, You can swim in it, sure, but that uh, pool is designed to uh, help you treat your muscle aches and uh, other uh, stiff back and that type of thing. There are all kinds of jets in that water, in that pool that you can set up anytime you want. I've always been fascinated by this little tiny house halfway up this mountain range, just outside of Zermatt. Uh, I try to zoom in on it every time I, in every chance I can, but it's hard to uh, really get close to it. It's so tiny and so far up. I keep asking myself, how in the world do you get there? How do you get out of there? Um, how do you get any provisions up to this place? I mean, you can carry a backpack, of course, but how much can you take? I don't know. Here is our train ride going up uh, to the... Um, to the top. Um, I think it's called Gorn, Gornamat. Um, we nicknamed it Corner Gas after a, uh, <laughs> a favorite uh, comedy show in Canada that ran for years and years, Corner Gas. I don't know why, it just struck a funny bone with us. And we decided to take the train up to Corner Gas and uh, <laughs> see what it was like up there. We, of course, left on what is obviously a gorgeous day. And right away, within two minutes, three minutes, you are climbing right out of town on a very steep angle, and you can see these chalet-type um, buildings. A number of them are hotels. Most are apartments and condos. They take all kinds of different shapes, but they all have sort of that alpine look to them. It's really cool. And, of course, here again is the star of the show. The further up you get, the more dramatic this mountain becomes. And it is just stunning, absolutely stunning. Um you're still in the tree line as you're climbing out of the uh, city or town of Zermatt. You do come across occasionally some uh, phenomenal views of these gorges and uh, waterfalls cascading down. In the wintertime, of course, this will be all snow covered with three, four, five, six feet of snow or more. And it would be just a magical winter wonderland, of course. But uh, here we are in the dead of summer, the middle of July, 2022. And we're heading up, and I can tell you, it doesn't take long to leave the trees behind because obviously you're starting at 5,100 feet. You're going to 10,200 feet 
around that seven eight thousand foot mark uh the trees start to really thin out and uh, you can see right here uh <laughs> The uh, first thing you notice are just bushes, and after a while, there's just grass growing the higher up you go. This is looking south um, at uh, one of the towns that you have to pass through to get here. Uh, you got to get through all those mountains to get up to uh, Zurich in the north part of the country. But uh, this is a, a phenomenal view. You cannot, uh, you can drive a car from there to the, the beginning of Zermatt, but you have to leave your car on the outskirts of town and then you can only use electric transportation inside the town once you get up closer to the top you see this kind of thing these absolute stunning views of these mountain tops these ranges and uh, you start to see glaciers here again is is the Matterport uh, the Matterport the Matterhorn again um, as we um, keep coming uh, higher and higher and higher notice the trees are gone but the cows are here they were actually a herd of cows uh, enjoying the grass. Um, and uh, when we came back down later in the day, they were already corralled for the evening and, uh, and being looked after. The other thing you see are, is this here. These top of these mountains have these uh, cable car rides up there. Just incredible. To the naked eye, it's hard to spot. But when you zoom in, you can tell that, oh, my gosh, look at that. There is a, a cable car station up there. And in the wintertime, you uh, you can go up there and ski down the backside of that mountain. Um, in the summertime, you can go up there and do what we do. You can take the train all the way up here, or you can take a cable car all the way up to there and get a great view. It's uh, probably 11,000 feet up there instead of 10,200. There are about four stations going up this, uh, this, this uh, rail line to get to the top and uh, you can get off any one of them and get back on all you want you know, all day long but when you get to the top you see this the uh, glaciers that are here oh my god these are stunning absolutely stunning caught a caught a helicopter um, uh, flying by and uh, that is the one way to get in and out of there very quickly in an emergency of course and obviously in the wintertime, uh, any skiers that get hurt, that's how they're, you know, likely to be evacuated. Here he goes, uh, the other side of the train, he's heading down. Um, there's a lot of survey work going on during the summer. There's a lot of repair work going on on some of the cable cars. This is a, uh, uh, an area that really requires high maintenance. You can imagine the wear and tear on any equipment up here has got to be so severe and so uh, you want to get parts up there for the cable car um, technicians to make adjustments you're going to fly them up with a helicopter that's the only way to do it um, you know obviously if the if the if the uh, cable car is not working how are you going to get stuff up there you're going to fly it up there we saw this waterfall um, it was unbelievable, uh, so dramatic. There were about four or five streams that fed it. I have to be about three or four miles away from this thing. Um, it is a huge waterfall where water was just melting off the glacier and coming down the mountain. Really impressive. And I zoom back to sort of what you would normally see with the naked eye. Look how tiny it looks from way back here. Uh, that is a dramatic um a thing to witness uh, here's another glacier here that you can see coming down the mountain and slowly but surely melting away with uh, the, the hot weather the train uh, comes up to a uh, an observatory building and um, even Jennifer with her bad hip and her walking cane uh, was able to get off the train no problem and uh, we were able to take a helicopter uh, sorry an elevator to the observation platform here i am my daughter is filming me here and i am uh, proving to all of you that i am not in creston i really was in switzerland i really was up here at this area uh and i thought well come on over with me come on over here let me show you the star of the show over here uh just, yeah come on over here here you go there it is right there matter the matterhorn uh between switzerland and italy is that impressive or what 
and uh, so many unique angles that you can get of this mountain. It's amazing. Look at the look at the uh, rail line behind me. You can just see the angle of the line. I uh, did a uh, time lapse photography of the mountain um, just to kind of show how the clouds were moving along. Um, there were people doing this. Uh, a number of people were doing this at the same time. Uh, as well and it, it made for a really spectacular uh, footage here's that uh, platform i was talking about this is the observation deck you can order a beer here a coffee a bite to eat they'll serve you here you can just sit here and, and enjoy the views um, and of course you've got to relax when you come up here because at 10,200 feet the air is thin and you get winded very easily i decided to walk to the edge of this uh, observation deck and just point down my camera and there's a little walking path down below and then below that nothing and look at that there are rocks down there that have fallen off over the years and are just sitting now on the ice flow and will melt away and eventually they'll be deposited down below that ice when the ice is all gone that is a huge huge uh, uh area there uh, that's got to be five six miles long going way up to the top of these mountain ranges it is just spectacular if you ever get the chance to go here, you've got to go. Um, the cost of this rail trip, I think on a per-person basis, it was about 128 uh, francs a person. That would be about 140 American dollars round trip. I can tell you right now, that's worth every penny. Um, I noticed uh, those cable cars in the distance way down there, but then I noticed something else. Uh, you'll see the cable cars moving back and forth, but there... In the middle of the screen, I don't know if you can see, there is one of those gliders. Uh, the folks, uh, they come up with the uh, the cable cars all the way up to the top, and then they walk over to a kind of a, a hilly area there uh, off to the side, and they launch themselves, and they start uh, gliding in those in those gliders. And those are the ones that we see down in Zermatt. Um, it takes about, you can take about an hour to go from here easily back to Zermatt. And as this camera is panning over, you can now see the observation area. There's actually a hotel on the top floor here. You can actually stay in a room overnight up here if you want. I'm not sure how comfortable you'd be at 10,200 feet, but there are people who spend the night here and they have all the services if you want to, uh, cough up the money. Um, up this pathway, uh, you can see over here, there's a, the top of another cable car way over there. They look so close, but they aren't. <laughs> They're quite a distance away. It is deceptive. Um, I tried to take as many videos as I could, knowing that I was here on a perfect July day. Temperature was probably about 70 degrees, very little wind, um, absolutely perfect uh, conditions. Um, I don't know how many days a year are like this. Uh, obviously in the winter, you've got, uh, snowy days and sunny days in the summertime. You have rainy days and sunny days. We caught a good one. We decided today was the day we're going to go and really enjoy this phenomenal, um, geographical view. Uh, I'm at the very top of the viewing platform, by the way, I'm, you can see kind of over the roof of this, uh, observation area. And there's the Matterhorn. And as the day wore on, you notice how the fewer the clouds were, were fewer and fewer and fewer. Now we could see that entire side of the matter, the Matterhorn Mountain. And uh, there were a number of people up here, not not hundreds, but uh, you know a couple of dozen. It was just a pleasant, quiet day. Um, not a lot of kids running around because again, children run out of energy up here pretty quick. But I'll tell you, uh, these uh, these views are just breathtaking you can see the cable car way up there that tiny little dot uh just arriving uh to give you a sense of scale even though i've zoomed in as far as i could it is still just a little dot of a cable car probably holding eight or ten people at a time if it were full of people um yeah this is really something the air up here perfectly clear um just amazing here's that waterfall again i i decided to take another shot of it you can hear it uh, from the top of this observation area, you can hear that water running down, falling down as it echoes off all the, uh, the other uh, mountains. There's another view of that cable car ride, uh, from this uh, distance here. We have to uh, probably be four or five miles away from it. And again, the Matterport, uh, the Matterport, the Matterhorn, 
uh, is right there for your viewing pleasure. Absolutely amazing and uh, and uh, exciting. I'm so pleased at the quality of this uh, photography uh, just off my iPhone. It was such a beautiful, clear day. I got some spectacular footage here. And this is the very top of the uh, viewing area that uh, we're, uh, we were able to get to. And man, uh, people were enjoying it. They were just sitting there and like me, jaws, you know, down to our knees. Now, I took a little video of myself talking to you, so I'm going to let that run right now. Here we go. Hey, everybody. How you doing? It's your buddy Bruce here. Traveling with Bruce from Switzerland. This is as good as it gets, let me tell you. Taking the uh, railway up here. Uh, even if you're on a cane, Jen has got a bad hip. We came all the way up here to see this. Uh, the rail line brings you all the way to a viewing platform and you've got this unbelievable view, including this incredible shot of I think the Matterhorn <laughs> just behind me over there unreal let me turn the camera around for you see how this works out I don't know if it'll work or not can I turn the camera around I don't know don't know if I can uh, it's unbelievable the uh, the price is absolutely worth it it's just uh, a spectacular day here in July right here in Switzerland look at this glacier behind me here unbelievable there are five or six glaciers around here and all kinds of water melting off them here's the uh, observation platform behind me that the train will bring you right to this there's an elevator ride that'll take you to the uh, platform you see down there so even so even Jen can get a great view this is uh, coming back that's looking back to where we came from from Zermatt that's down below you can't see Zermatt from up here it's way down in the valley. Absolutely phenomenal. I would highly recommend anyone and everyone to come here if you ever, ever get the chance. This is a uh, World UNESCO opportunity and you don't want to, you don't want to miss this. It's just spectacular. Okay, we're back. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I was winded uh, just doing that. Um, uh, you really uh, had to pace yourself. When you were up here, people were not running around like, uh, you know, crazy, uh, you know, nobody's playing tag up here. <laughs> There's not enough oxygen to go around. Now, these young gals, uh, obviously their lungs are in much better shape than mine are. <laughs> They're in their 20s, so they got a little more energy having some fun up there. But I'll tell you, uh, after a few minutes of doing that kind of activity, you you slow down dramatically and you rest and you just take this view all in. Um, I got to tell you, the older folks who were here, like myself, we really appreciate it. This was the view that Jen had. Uh, she was in the cafeteria having a cup of tea. And that was the view out of her window. Just, you know, ho-hum, there's the uh, Matterport, you know. Here's the end of the line. Uh, you can see the uh, the rail line disappearing just ahead there. It's unreal. There's a middle part of that track there that's kind of a ratchet that'll uh, control the car from running away on us uh, very interesting when we got back down um a couple hours later uh i noticed i think seven eight or nine of these gliding uh, uh kids here these these kids in these parachutes oh my gosh it's so spectacular completely silent they make no noise whatsoever and it's just a treat to watch them um whether you're above them or below them it's really cool to watch them against the mountains uh, all around town. Uh, it's it, there's, Some of them are very skillful, and they're very good at what they do. Now, the next day, um, Jen Jr. and I, we rented a couple of uh, bicycles. Uh, these were e-bikes. These were electric bikes that, to anyone's uh, viewing, would look like uh, mountain bikes. And we drove all around town. We came to the very edge of uh, Zermatt here where the cable car, one of the cable car rides happens to be. And we noticed how they launched them. And uh, I watched, uh, watched them go over our heads. We were on a trail underneath the cable car um, system here. And in theory, we could have ridden the bikes up this trail and followed uh, for a good distance these cable cars. But 
uh, we decided this would be as far as we'd go and we would just take this shot here but i'm going to show you a little later on another shot of those cable cars from another angle and look how the next morning there were no clouds anywhere we were about um, 30 celsius so about 85 86 degrees uh here in zermatt and all the clouds had completely dissipated this is a a town square right here in the in old town zermatt uh that has been redone over the years all kinds of shops and restaurants and ice cream shops coffees cafes restaurants hotels everything here uh, people get around with a bike. Uh, they get around with electric uh, transportation. And this architecture, it just is so magical, so romantic. Uh, you, you just, you can't get enough of this stuff. And in the background, of course, is the Matterhorn, you know. Notice the cranes, too. Um, all over Zermatt are cranes replacing old buildings or building all brand new buildings. There's an older hotel there, the House du Parc. And then next to it, right over there, is a brand new resort, which I've got another shot of uh, later on. Unbelievable uh, difference uh, in uh, architecture from, from one style to another. This is, uh, again, in Old Town uh, Zermatt. Uh, there's a museum here. Here's another grand old hotel that's been here a while. Um, absolutely gorgeous and beautifully maintained busy in the winter busy in the summer uh these guys make nothing but money uh there's gorna gorna grat there you go about the about two-thirds of the way down four hours 40 minutes gorna grat that is the top of the mountain for the end of the rail line um through town we have this um um glacial runoff uh this river this used to be a wild stream Un, uh, untamed it's now been completely tamed there's a dam way up in the valley up here that controls the water flow uh, there's also an electrical hydro plant way up in the mountains there that's where all the electricity comes from for Zermatt and vicinity uh, but this is the water runoff um, that goes right through town and on both sides of the uh, stream are of course reinforced uh, concrete uh, slabs to uh, control the flow and make sure we don't have flooding and all that kind of stuff. But uh, wherever you are in town, uh, the views are just so dramatic. Uh, you, you just can't get over it. Uh, of course, the, the Matterhorn dominates everything. But you see all kinds of folks on bikes uh, walking along uh, as well. A lot of hikers here. Um, a lot of folks with uh, cameras. And uh, and then, of course, we've got the folks up in the air with their uh, with their uh, gliders uh whatever those are called absolutely uh incredible the architecture i i'm just marvel how it's built there's the train we were on by the way uh we were above it now we were on a on a tra on a trail heading north uh, heading up on our bikes and we stopped and i noticed the train coming and i thought oh, i'll film that because we were on that train that's just leaving the station in the middle of zermatt heading up the mountain and we were uh, climbing and climbing and climbing in elevation on these e-bikes and i gotta tell you talk about handy um there were four power settings that you could use for these bikes and uh i was usually on power one power two but i did have to go to power four when it got steeper but oh my gosh did we go up now here you have two more of these uh of these paragliders i guess is what we're calling them and this guy here is coming in for a landing at the landing zone you notice on the bottom where zermatt is and you can tell that he is landing on the edge of town um, and I decided to catch this guy and his buddy coming in for a final landing what I didn't realize was in both cases the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, paragliders uh, it was a pilot and a passenger so uh, a tourist coming in so there's two people uh, coming in on each of them if I if I have my bearings right here they come uh, the first one is coming down. I wanted to make sure to watch him land right near the rail tracks, uh, near the railway station. And uh, you can see as, he, as he's coming down, just below him now, that is the end of the railway station. That's where you come out, heading out of town, or that's the station when you're coming into town. And here, here we go. I zoomed in on him with the pink, uh, the pink paraglider. And he's just gently coming in. One more little loop to kind of lose elevation. Here we go. 
and uh, a very light wind, so it makes it real easy. The second one is overhead, just swinging along and, and waiting for the first one to come down on these <laughs> wild suicide spins. And now you see the shadow of the paraglider on the ground as they, they're they coming down, and um, shortly you will see where others have landed. And there they are down there on the bottom right. Here comes the first one, and it's just such a gentle touchdown. It is really something to watch uh, here in the summertime. Coming in, the paragliders are just about 10, 15 feet off the ground. Now maybe 5 feet off the ground, and then here we go. We stop, and there they are. They just, just stand right there like no big deal. Here comes the second one right behind them, and uh, same thing. Uh, coming in for the final approach and just before they land they uh, swing their bodies in such a way that the paraglider stops dead right on the spot right there that's it and there's no drama to it it's amazing absolutely amazing Jen uh, Jennifer Jr. and I were up at a uh, at a bar we had come up this uh, this pathway here's this bar it was closed but you could go on the patio and, and film from there, uh, the, but they weren't open for business. I just noticed that California U.S. Highway 66 sign put on that pole there. I didn't notice it at the time, but I see it now. Here's a train leaving town, which is a sad sight to be on when you're on the train leaving town. It's a sad occasion because, boy, it's, uh, it's disappointing to leave this beautiful place. But that little bar there could probably hold about 20, 30 people. It was open later in the afternoon when we left, uh, but we we uh, stopped there and we went even higher than that, and we were up at least two thousand feet from from town center. We were now at like seven thousand feet with these e bikes, and uh, I tell you, we used them for several hours, and uh, I don't think I used a quarter of the energy. Uh, by the way, that re- that uh, cable car right down there is where we were and uh, that was the first leg of a cable car ride here is where the cable cars ended up going once you transferred you transferred over to there and then you went to the big one way up there that i showed you earlier from that rail ride we took you can see way up there how high those cable cars will take you uh, from the edge of town right to the top of those uh, mountains and you can get a phenomenal view from up there, and just like we did with the train ride. Here is the uh, restaurant that we came up to. Uh, Jennifer Jr. and I, we ordered some ice cream and some refreshments. I had a Coke Zero, and we had some water to drink, and uh, we took some photos from way up here, and then we uh, took some shots back down from uh, this location. We had to have been over 2,200 feet up, maybe 2,500 feet up. And here is uh, Zermatt. As we were returning, we wanted to take a look, and I wanted to see where the first hotel was that Jen and I were in. It's now in the middle of the picture. There's a uh, four-story uh, kind of a white-colored building, and then there's a balcony uh, just up there. But uh, anyway, it's not important. We were uh, we were there, and then on the second hotel is just on the left now. There are three buildings, one beside the other, coming up the mountain, and... Uh, uh, the uh, the second hotel that we stayed at was absolutely wonderful as well. We really, really enjoyed it. Cannot get enough of this uh, architecture and the logistics. How in the world do you build uh, these buildings in a little town where you're not allowed to bring in trucks and heavy machinery? I, I, didn't, I don't know how you do that. Um, in town itself, some of these uh, quaint little... Uh, little roads uh cobblestones in some cases paved in others um i saw this once but i just had to i just had to film it a couple of times just to kind of get it right you're walking along and coming around the corner there's a church uh, a steeple and then there's the uh, matterhorn mountain behind it what a, what a phenomenal view you don't often get a view like this with a perfect clear day like that normally the matterhorn is uh, clouded or shrouded in the cloud, uh, you know, secrecy and all that. Really amazing. Uh, just phenomenal. We really enjoyed our bike ride, as did other folks. Uh, here's a, a typical, um, either a condo or uh, a hotel, where uh, all the plants are out now during the summertime. The Matterhorn Lodge uh, Hotel and Apartments. And uh, there are just dozens and dozens and dozens of these all over town. 
for any of you to rent. If you want to find a hotel in Zermatt, you just go to Expedia.com. That's what Jen and I did. We went to Expedia, entered Zermatt, and uh, you started seeing these, you know, all these listings. Uh, we wanted a, a hotel with a pool because we wanted a spa, and so we eliminated the ones that didn't have it. Here's that new lodge I was telling you about. It's called the Omnia, O-M-N-I-A, and that glass uh, um, thing there, that's the elevator, um, the elevator area. What a what a phenomenal looking building. Here is a typical uh, day um, in Zermatt. Uh, that that uh, scoreboard there where it says Bordeaux, that was telling us it was 31 Celsius. My digital uh, phone will not pick up the actual numbering. Um, the resolution is too much. But folks everywhere, um, we're we're basically five miles away from Italy, but. You really can't get from Italy to Zermatt from Italy. Uh, you you have to um, enter uh, Switzerland through, I guess, Geneva and, and or other areas and then work your way back in here because they're the end of the rail line that you had just seen a few minutes ago. Uh, <clears throat> the, the main rail line stops in Zermatt and the only rail out of Zermatt is up to the top of the mountain. And there is no connection to Italy from up there. You can see it, but you can't. Uh, you can't take a car, and you can't take a train to Italy direct from here. It's uh, cut off by the mountains. These uh, these phenomenal buildings with the copper roofs. Uh, are, if you're into architecture, man, you're gonna love this place. There again is one of the cable cars. There, here's the Villa Margarita, and uh, what a neat looking building this is. These buildings were were built originally. Some of them. In the early uh, 1900s, late 1800s, but over the years, uh, many have been replaced or very much modernized. And of course, this is a very common scene throughout Switzerland in the summertime. Here's a peek at some of the sh chalets that are uh, tucked into some of the mountains. Now, I'm going to uh, get quiet again. I'm going to let you listen to the runoff of the river. Listen to this. That, that is just spectacular. Of course, that, that uh, glacier runoff is running 24-7. Uh, the next morning we woke up and I noticed the moon coming uh, towards the Matterhorn. And I tried to shoot a time-lapse uh, video of it, which you'll see in just a minute. This is uh, me uh, working my camera manually and just zooming in to give you an idea of what this spectacular scene was like to see this, to see the moon just going behind it but unfortunately i tried to do a time lapse video and it's really sad you see the moon behind it there look at that and it, it, i couldn't adjust the focus to to get you a better view it's really sad but i really did try to zoom uh, zoom that this was leaving zermatt we had uh, all our bags in one of these taxi cabs and we were getting a ride to the uh, station we were we're only about 600 yards away or so you always have to remember to look both ways before you cross the street. Uh, but uh, saying goodbye one last time, seeing all the folks uh, doing their thing. And this is the train ride uh, part of it, leaving Zermatt and catching a waterfall. Uh, this is typical uh, Switzerland. Um, the locals are so used to it. We visitors are blown away by it. 
I got to tell you, we loved it. Uh, I'd highly recommend if you ever get a chance to uh, take a holiday in Europe, grab a week at least and get over here to Zermatt. Find a hotel through Expedia.com, anywhere from, oh, 100 US dollars a night to 500 a night, depending on how fancy you want to go, and enjoy yourself. Rent the bikes, rent the skis, don't worry about anything else. Thank you for joining me on this very long video. We'll talk to everybody. Bye for now.